So there was a question on how, when we have a hypoelastic solid, uh, we end up generating work in closed parts. So um, let's recall that with a hypoelastic solid, so, so the question was how is work uh, generated in closed parts? with hypoelasticity. Okay, and so, so what we're talking about is this, right? So we do have uh, our, our first Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor. It is indeed a function of the deformation gradient, but no more. In particular, we do not have this, okay? Okay? Right? We don't have this last equality. Okay. And, and really, this is it. By saying that this last equality is not obtained, what we are saying is that we don't have any such uh, function psi. Uh, which is a state function, and um, thereby what this means is that when we do work right when we when we calculate the work done right when we do this integral what is happening is that we do not have a mechanism to store that work, okay? So if, if psi existed, right, then we would have a mechanism and we would be saying that physically we have a mechanism in the material to store that energy, okay? Instead, we don't have this, right? So yes, we're deforming the material, but the material is such that we, we've constructed a model and this may not be a physical model, right? It may not be a physically realistic model, but still, our mathematical model for the solid is one in which we have neglected or we failed to come up with a mechanism, a mathematical mechanism for storing that energy, right? For, for, for taking that work that we're doing now and storing it as energy, okay? So that mechanism is missing, all right? In our description of the solid, all right? Um, and and this, this really is why we don't have, uh, we don't have path independence, right? Because we, we are not storing that energy. So this thing does not have, uh, this has no path independence. Okay, and therefore if we don't have path independence, right, so now if we have the space, right, and we look at some states say P1, F1, and P2, F2, right? It does, since we don't have path independence, we do a certain amount of work that way, right? And we do a different amount of work, which is not just the negative of the first path, in the second, in, in the second path, right? Along the second path, okay? We've neglected to make sure that, that when we deform it one way and we come back, right? Along some path, we are, we have, we've neglected to make sure that there is a function which just gives us back all the energy we put in, okay? And so we see that if we do close paths of this kind, we do generate some amount of work, okay? Mathematically, the, the reason that this happens is that in general, it is difficult, it is not easy uh, to find functions. Um, in general, it is difficult to show, given a GF, right? If you, if you, if you take a GF, it is generally difficult to show that GF is equal to this 
for some psi. Okay, you can go the other way. Of course, if you if you start out with a psi, then you're assured that if you if, if you differentiate it with respect to f and you get a g, that is assured. But if you go the other way around, you're not assured of of of, of this. Okay, uh, and and in general, if you, if you if you if you were to just construct, if you were to uh, cook up some function g, you and and try to show that it uh, it can be written as partial of psi with respect to f, you will find that that's actually difficult for a tensor function that's nonlinear. Okay, so those those are the physical and mathematical reasons for why hypoelasticity ends up generating work in closed paths.